Hi everyone, I just wanted to give you my commentary on this video that I found on uh, VigilantCitizen.com. It's called Plannedopolis. Uh, by Forum for the Future, Envision Scenarios for Cities in 2040. Action for a Sustainable World, How Will People Travel in the Future? This is actually part of a series of, I think, four videos uploaded on YouTube by Spydatech, Spydat3K. First of all, as they mention here on uh, Vigilant Citizen, uh, this was funded by corporations such as Bank of America, the City of London Corporation, PepsiCo UK, Time Warner, Royal Dutch Shell, and Vodafone. And basically, this little character, V, who's a doctor, takes you through a day in her life in four different scenarios, in uh, four different videos. They all, they all have certain things in common. Uh, number one, food and water is regulated and rationed by a global food council that seizes con total control over farming. Meat is a rare treat to be enjoyed only on special occasions. Th that's, not, that's not so far in the future. I mean, that, that's how it is right now. <laughs> uh, not 100%, but certainly heading in that direction. And as far as the globalists slash corporatists are concerned, doing, making excellent progress. And uh, pretty soon, you know, small farmers will be, you know, pushed out completely. And it's all about agribusiness and especially biotech. Two, uh, the state decides what your job will be. You get designated career announcements. Now, where have I heard this before? Oh, yeah, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World. So are you um, an alpha or a beta or a delta or maybe you're an omega and you're going to be picking up garbage for the rest of your life? So the government decides your career for you. V mentions that she's a doctor, although she says that they only see patients virtually now, as if that's a good thing. Hello, Mrs. Klesmer, dear. I'm going to be needing a blood sample today. Now, I want you to take the syringe and insert it at a 45 degree angle into your vein. No, no, not like that. That's 90 degrees. You want to put it 45. No, not like that. That's 90. I said 45 degrees. 45 degree angle, Mrs. Klesmer. Oh, good heavens, you've hit an artery. Apply direct pressure. Direct pressure, Mrs. Klesmer. Everyone seems to have a job, but a lot of jobs are done by robots, so it seems there would have to be a certain amount of depopulation involved. Get rid of the excess and make good use of the rest. Movement and behavior is controlled by a calorie credit card. In all of these, um, she always seems to say, she always says things like how much she loves where she lives and she loves her job and everything is so wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? It's really clean and safe. She mentions that vehicles are controlled by computers. Also mentions that th there are still, uh, you know, cars, ve vehicles that people use individually, but only the rich have those. Everybody else has to use this electronically computerized, you know, controlled transportation of one kind or another, which obviously means that, you know, their movements are completely controlled. And also, uh, they, they talk a lot about biofuels and how they use household waste. So you get to poop in a bag and throw it in with your, you know, leftover vegetables or whatever and make your own biofuel. And then you exchange this for coupons. Isn't it wonderful? The government controls every area of my life. They don't visit people very much. She visits her sister Lena uh, virtually and they have dinner with the grandparents in Shanghai virtually. She also seems to do some kind of virtual reality thing where she goes on a picnic with her husband. It's all done virtually. Oh, for those who didn't go along with the program, they have uh, non-transition zones where the people didn't convert to low, a low-carbon way of life. And she says it's scary going through those zones. There are also the cry-freedom ghettos in another uh, scenario. For the, the people who didn't want to go along with the program, uh, mentions here, those who resist and still cling to some semblance of freedom in defiance of the state and the supercomputers running the slave grid, there's the cry freedom ghetto. Orwell would be proud. Prison camps for malcontents who are blocked from getting jobs, accessing high-speed transport, or the internet. Yeah, it's exactly like in, you know, 1984, pretty much, where you have the proles that are, they just do whatever they do in their little ghetto. She says, it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work, right? Because the transportation is all done for you. Isn't that nice? You could just switch off your brain. Oh, lovely. With this many people around, I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. Yeah, and who's in charge of the mega computer? That's the question. 
this is just, you know, absolutely disgusting propaganda, but what I think is interesting is that, for one, it, it reflects a lot the predictive programming that we've been given through science fiction, like in, you know, Brave New World in 1984, and these kind of books that people just say, ah, oh, well, you know, it's just, a, it's just fiction, it's science fiction, but it's a lot more than that. You can get a very good glimpse into uh, what the elites would like to have in store for you down the road by reading science fiction. Also, this stuff is everywhere. It's not, it's not only in these videos coming from a uh, forum for the future. And these people are serious. This is no joke. But this is not the only uh, place you can find this kind of propaganda. Here's an example from a poster that was up at the Y. This struck me so much that I actually requested a copy of the poster. I said I wanted to put it up in my son's room. <laughs> Good blue pill mom. <laughs> Défi climat. Chaque geste compte. So it's uh, for climate change. You know, to fight climate change, every action counts. And here is the planet with the thermometer going down, which seems to be happening lately. Maybe we're going to head into an ice age. Great, no more global warming. You'll notice some things. Uh, no cars. Well, there's one car, but they're having a carpool. Uh, people are taking public transport and bikes. But don't get me wrong, I'm all for green energy and reducing pollution. I just don't think that you know, the problems with the environment should, that are created by corporations should then be used as an excuse for corporations to control all areas of our life. Also, some composting, recycling, which is not a bad thing. Here's Mr. Jones having dinner. Uh, you'll notice there is no meat on his plate. Being vegetarian or vegan is not necessarily a bad thing either. It, it, it's just that, you know, this is always this lie that, you know, we're causing this problem because there's too many of us or the way we live, but really the problem is agribusiness. It's the way they've consolidated everything and, and then that, that creates a problem and then they blame it on us, you know. Just to show you though that the, the dietary restrictions always seem to play a big part in this. And, and, and another thing is in, in the video, uh, she mentions that, you know, the government controls what you eat and uh, you get a lot of uh, peas and carrots, right? I, I bet you wouldn't get a lot of fresh produce. You have some, maybe some ration cards for that or what. But anyway, it's all, it's all centrally controlled and that's the big problem. And you'll notice here also that you see your friends only on the computer. I think that's really sad. I think that it'd be much better for people to move out of the cities and live in small communities and really know their neighbors and to, to see them only in person and not on the computer, you know, as much as possible. I think you get the idea that, you know, they try to make it sound like it's all really nice and see we have this big problem and here's the nice solution. But here's, here's the truth about this. If you want to know really why we have so much poverty, why we have starvation and so many problems, you know, with crops and things, I'm not even going to explain it. I'm just going to tell you, read these two books, The Globalization of Poverty and The New World Order by Professor Michel Chosodovsky, and this will explain all about macroeconomic reforms, uh, how, you know, basically economic hitmen are used, countries are sold, uh, you know, they, they sell themselves into debt buying infrastructure they don't need, they accept GMO crops, which ruins local agriculture, how free trade plays a big part in this. Did I mention the IMF and the World Bank with their macroeconomic reforms? And then also you have Seeds of Destruction by William F. William Engdahl, these are two really excellent books. This will tell you all about um, the biotech industry and how that ties in also with um, eugenics and the agenda for t global control and total domination of everything, especially the food supply. So, um, Plantopolis, 1984, Brave New World, uh, that's the way the globalist elite would like to have it, but it doesn't have to be that way. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the, the solution is always decentralization and it's always people becoming more independent when it comes to their own food supply. It's always not concentrating us into cities, but moving people out into the country. People moving out of the city, but having small, self-sufficient, independent communities. I mean, these are things that would really help. I'm no expert, but I can tell you that centralization and corporatism and free trade has done a lot of damage. And I'd rather not have planned Opolis as the solution. Well, thank you for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.